This public service announcement was paid for by the joint governments of the world. If children are present, turn your radio off at the sound of the tone. Mommy, Daddy, does the great resuscitating platypus really exist? Confirming your children's belief in the existence of the great resuscitating platypus of the North will keep them healthy. New international studies show that children who believe in the great resuscitating platypus of the North have a greater recovery rate from all childhood illnesses than children who don't. Furthermore, the belief that if brave, the platypus will visit while you sleep, recite his many poems, and cause you to wake up healthy, has shown clinically to reduce occurrences of illness later in life. Parents, the day of discovery will come. They, like we, will learn the great recitating platypus of the North does not exist. But do not hasten the moment. Allow them to believe. Give your children the chance to grow healthy and strong. Hey guys, this is Dan. Uh, I play Jacques on the Orbiting Human Circus. On behalf of the whole team, uh, I want to welcome you to Episode 5, and I want to thank our sponsor, Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans, who really do make this show possible. So if you're enjoying Season 1 of the Orbiting Human Circus, uh, we wanted to let you know that the next chapter of the janitor's story will be told live only. That's right. The Orbiting Human Circus will be touring the world in 2017. So be sure to check orbitinghumancircus.com slash shows as tour dates will be announced through 2017. We're grateful to have Rocket Mortgage as our sponsor because for many of us, like me at Orbiting Human Circus, applying for a traditional bank loan would be nearly impossible. In my normal life, the fact is I'm the moon. That's right, I am the moon. The minute I come out at night, all the banks close. For me, the antique earthbound banking ways of the past are simply out of reach. I need a rocket mortgage. A mortgage that's entered the space age, where we are. Let's face it, it's been a long time since Neil Armstrong stuck that flag in me. You can easily share your bank statements and pay stubs at the touch of a button, so you don't have to search the black limitless void for your paperwork, if that's where you happen to live. Check out Rocket Mortgage today at quickenloans.com slash OHC. That's O-H-C for Orbiting Human Circus. Equal house lender licensed in all 50 states. NMLSconsumeraccess.org number 3030. And now, please sit back and enjoy episode 5. Behind the red velvet curtains on the wooden stage, beyond two performing donkeys being fed carrots by their trainer, to the left of several elderly women readying themselves on stilts, directly across from ten chefs preparing omelettes on Bunsen burners, clutching his mop and looking innocent out in the open where anybody could tackle and remove him is Julian, janitor at the Eiffel Tower. Shouldn't you be hiding? No, I'm, I'm allowed. There's going to be a hypnotist on the show tonight. My great-grandfather was a stage hypnotist. Really? I never heard you say that before. Not three times every day. Yeah, you know how much I lifted last weekend? A six-pack. Hide! It's Jacques and Pierre! They'll kick you out! Hey, kid, how's it going? Hey, what's up? When's the hypnotist go on? Twenty minutes. Catch it in. He didn't yell at you. I better go get cleaned up. Mr. Cameron said I could use his dressing room. He what? He couldn't have. Yeah, he's been so nice to me since I found the cricket. I gotta go get my good clothing. It's like a holiday. Broadcasting from the top of the Eiffel Tower, the orbiting human circus of the air. We start things off, ladies and gentlemen, tonight with something special. Yes, at this exact moment each night from the Eiffel Tower, one can hear church bells ring out from all Paris. It begins slowly and spreads and spreads a sound our show normally drowns out. But not tonight, ladies and gentlemen. We have placed a microphone on the very top of the tower in order to give you this evening's musical act.
Meanwhile, in our host John Cameron's dressing room, defying all reasonable explanation, we find our janitor changing into what once must have been his Sunday clothes. A rumpled suit, no less, of surprising quality. Hey, what could I have in my bag? It's a feature presentation. The janitor pulls out an old reel of tape. Uh, but why do you have the tape with the feature presentation on it? Who cares? Look, the giant tape machine's out in the hall, like right outside the door. If I pull it in here, I can put the tape on and we can listen to it. I, I don't think you should do that. Oh no, he's opening the door. He's pulling the tape machine inside. But you're supposed to be mopping the outer lattice work. God, you're so afraid to do anything. And the janitor presses play on the large tape machine, and a remarkable story begins to play. Really, it's quite incredible, but we're not going to let you hear it, though I'm sure you will hear it eventually, but not now, because at this very moment, there are some sounds out in the hall. Jacques, Pierre. Yeah? Where's the tape machine, huh? We left it right here. You left it right here, but it's not here now. We're looking right now. Did we'll you go, look go stage look. left? Uh, I'm going I'm going behind stage left right now. It's Chief Stagehand Letitia with stagehands Jacques and Pierre. Inside the dressing room, the door is thrown open. What are you doing with the tape machine? I... Why have you pulled the giant tape machine in this room? Oh, I didn't... Oh, bon dieu. You have played the feature presentation. What? You have played the secret reel. Letitia, why are you taking your belt off? Whoa. I, I'm going to beat him. Le Letitia, you can't do that. That's against the law. Okay, but this time I'm going to make him remember. I thought it was... No, you do not think. You do not care. But Letitia, please. Okay, quiet, Jacques. Take my belt for me so I'm not tempted to use it. Uh, okay. Julien, this is the end for you. After the show, I tell Jean Camaron what you have done. No longer will you clean out the cage of the animal. No longer will you keep our souls in your janitor closet. That's where they came and from. And I don't care how long you have been living here. You cannot use a station shower. It's my only place I can no, shower. No, no. I cannot wait for Jean Camaron. I will throw you out myself. Uh, Letitia, the hypnotist is on in 15 seconds. Mr. Cameron said I could watch the hypnotist. He did say, remember? It's 10 seconds, Letitia. Yeah, okay, because we have done second, but you just wait till after the show. All right, everybody, places! And so, narrowly escaping for now, the janitor gingerly approaches the side of the stage to watch. And now, as part of our continuing demonstration series, Scientific Advancement, ladies and gentlemen, Professor Heimlich, Epiphel, and our first brave volunteer. Thank you. Professor, this individual standing here on stage before us is in a hypnotic trance. That is correct. And they have no idea they're on stage. No idea whatsoever. They believe they are someplace else, in the home, in the car, listening to a radio program. So they're listening. Yes, but they have no idea that they are the subject. And you can prove this. Yeah. To test the trance, we present this French nobleman. I challenge you to a duel. Without a reaction. With their honor at stake and everything. Extraordinary. Mm, try whispering in the subject's ear. Testing. One, two, three. Testing. Hello? Without a reaction. That's amazing. Yeah, that's nothing. We have brought the subject's actual third grade teacher down. Defrocked the teacher, placed the naked teacher on a unicycle, and arranged to have this teacher ride circles around our subject, whistling the saber dance, and ride up this ramp into gigantic vat of chocolate custard! Another modern radio miracle, ladies and gentlemen. And now I will deepen the trance of this subject waiting over here. One hundred... Ninety-nine. We will return to this extraordinary demonstration in a moment. But first I would like to bring back to the stage someone who is a very special part of our world here. To prove there's a time and place for everything, I give you Julian, janitor at the Eiffel Tower. Julian, come on out. I come out? That's right. Come on. You can do it. S sorry, I, I didn't know it. Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, you know each night when the show ends and the audience files out the door, we often hear the distant sound of the janitor singing as he mops the halls. Me too. Oh, it's something we've all found strangely comforting at one time or another. And we thought it might be a nice surprise to share this comfort with all of you. Really? You want me to sing? That's right. Now? I do. Uh, Go right ahead, Julian. What would you like to sing? Do you, do you know where Evening's Dream goes? Ladies and gentlemen, Where Evening's Dream Goes, sung by Julian, janitor at the Eiffel Tower. Darkness, darkness always comes around surrounding At first nervous, the janitor begins to find his voice. He sings on, he grows more and more confident, and before he knows it, the audience rises to its feet as one, showering the janitor with bouquets until he stands buried up to his waist in white flowers. Milky white flowers. Thank, thank you. Thanks. Thank you so I much. I will now bring you out of your trance. Thank you. Thank you. Ten. Nine. Thank you. Eight. Seven. Thank you. Six. Five. Thank you. Four. Three. Thank you. Two. One. <gasps> the janitor awakes from a hypnotic trance to find himself dressed only in lederhosen and wading in a kiddie pool filled with Bavarian cream. I'm wet. It's horrible. A big hand for our subject, Julian the janitor. Tell us, what were you imagining? You seemed to be yelping like a seal and making strange gyrations. I, I thought I was singing. The subject has pierced the children's pool and run off. He has gotten Bavarian cream all over my shoes. Well, no matter. We'll continue with this subject here. The janitor runs off the stage. You will picture for me your greatest fantasy. What you truly desire. Off through the wings, backstage, and into the stage hands shower, slamming the door behind him. I hate this new camera, I hate him. He's banging his bare fist against the tile. He's going to break his hand, stop it. Please, please stop, please stop. You were singing, weren't you? Yeah, in my head. I like hearing you sing. My singing is stupid. What song were you singing? Doesn't matter. Come on, tell me. There's a song my great grandfather used to sing to me to put me to sleep when I was a little boy. Can I hear it? Come on. I want you right now. Please. Darkness, darkness, always come. That was nice. Sing more. Around, surrounding everyone. Darkness, darkness, always comes. My, my great grandfather used to wave his hand around like this when he was, when he would sing it, like a drunk orchestra conductor. Around, surrounding everyone. Darkness, darkness, always. The memory seems to comfort the janitor, and doing an impression of his great grandfather, he takes up conducting, closes his eyes, and throws himself into the song completely. Meanwhile, outside. And deeper, and deeper, that's right, and so much deeper. What is that horrible? A loud knocking ah, sound okay. echoes throughout the theater. We will have to start again from the beginning. Deeper and deeper it's and deeper the shower? and deeper. Who is using the stage and shower? It deeper. causes a pop to knock. It can be heard on the air. And deeper, oh, and deeper, deeper. What are you doing? We're on the air. Turn off that shower now. Host John Cameron comes running up. My God, 
What's happening over here? The janitor, he will be the death of the show. He is in there singing. I've knocked, but he can't hear. Well, go in and stop him. No, but I can't go in there. He's naked. It would be sexual harassment. You have to. Me? But I have a suit on. Oh, say quite that. Always with your suit. There is space to keep dry. Go, go. Thank you. But the janitor, eyes closed and fully entranced by his song, fails to notice John rush in. John presses his back against the door to stay dry, and trying desperately to keep the show G-rated, looking any place but down, settles his gaze on the janitor's oddly waving arm, and following the sweeping, conducting motion back and forth, strangely, forgets what it is he's doing. There is something in the strange, irregular sweeping of the arm that seems to lead him to the comfortable conclusion that there's no occupation in the world more engrossing and important than carefully watching the odd irregular motions of the janitor's sweeping arm, an activity so pleasing he soon forgets that anything exists except the janitor's arm, and settling into a pleasant stupor, all the stress of the past several months slips away until he feels he never wants to move again. The janitor stops his frenzied conducting, opens his eyes, and finds our host, John Cameron, standing in the shower closet with him. Mr. Cameron? But Mr. Cameron does not respond. He stands there, perfectly still and frozen like a statue. Oh my god. Wake up! What's wrong with him? Oh my god. It was my great-grandfather's song, and I was conducting like he did, and my great-grandfather was a stage hypnotist. John's in a trance. What? He's hypnotized. And I don't know how to wake him up. Oh, no. John, wake up. Five, four, three, two, one. And you're awake. Oh, God. Mr. Cameron, please wake up. The janitor shakes host John Cameron like a wax statue. Still nothing. Panicked, he pushes the door of the shower closet open. I gotta find the hypnotist. Julien! Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, what am I gonna do? Jeanne? What have you done to him? And deeper, and deeper, and deeper, and... The hypnotist! What is this interruption? Now we must start all over again. Deeper! And deeper? Mr. Hypnotist, You I... may call me Professor! Mr. Professor, I accidentally hypnotized Mr. Cameron backstage, and now I can't wake him up. He's frozen. You hypnotized him? You got Fascinating. Help. You got help. Calm down, young man. This will make for an interesting demonstration. Bring him out. And so a gravely concerned Letitia Sautier carries our frozen host, stiff <sighs> as a statue, out to the center of the stage. Fascinating! A state of complete catalepsy! By what means did you hypnotize him? I sang him this song that my great-grandfather used to sing to me when he wanted me to go to sleep. A song? Please sing it for me. No. Yes, immediately! Well, it just goes, darkness, darkness, always comes. Nonsense! This song could do no such thing. I, I was waving my arm around like this. Darkness, darkness, I was just waving my arms back and forth, and that was all I did. Professor, do you... Professor? Oh, no! Uh, Letitia! The prof... Letitia? Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Does anybody in the audience know how to... Oh. The entire audience, too, is frozen in a hypnotic trance. I hypnotized everybody. We're Castro. We're not hypnotized. Okay, please play the goodbye music. Oh, thank you. 
Thank you. Okay. Broadcasting from the top of the Eiffel Tower. This is the janitor saying, I'm so, so sorry. I... So every human circus of the air wishes you a good night. Hey again, guys. This is Dan Solomon on behalf of the whole Orbiting Human Circus team. I'd like to thank you for listening and sincerely thank our sponsor, Rocket Mortgage, for making this all possible. Rocket Mortgage brings the mortgage process into the 21st century with a fast, easy, and completely online process. Check out Rocket Mortgage today at quickenloans.com slash OHC. Lastly, on behalf of all of us, I want to say thank you for being out there and supporting us as you do. We couldn't make this without you, frankly. Goodbye, everybody. And now I will deepen the trance of this subject waiting over here. 100, 99, 98, 97, 95, 94, 93, 92, 90. <laughs> <laughs>